Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the latest edition of Coffee with the Pros. Uh, I'm John Clifton, and today I'm going to walk you through the process of updating icons for a Dynamics 365 entity, and we're going to use one of the free icon applications that are available. Um, from that application, you can go ahead and select a large number of icons, uh, uh, select from a large number of icons, customize them, and you can update your uh, entities uh, so the sitemap and other areas uh, look you know, more professional and more appealing to the users. Uh, so as far as the process goes today, what we're, uh, you wanna make sure, of course, that you've got your uh, entity or custom entity uh, you know, uh, set up already. Uh, and then you're gonna fire up this uh, new application that we'll be looking at. And then you can select the icon and create uh, 32 and 16 uh, pixel variations of it to use uh, to display in Dynamics 365. Once those icons are done, you can create a web resource for them and then we'll update the entity uh, with those icons. Um, by assigning the new web resources as the icons. And then we'll publish the icon updates and we'll go back and take a look at our work. So the scenario is um, that we have an entity called expenses and uh, we wanna update the icon for that. So let's take a look and see what that looks like currently. So we have in our projects area, we have a, an expenses entity, and of course, this is uh, the default icon, and it's uh, you know it's okay, but we want to do something better. We want to make it look a little bit nicer, and these three icons here in the projects section or era, sub area are um, custom icons, so we think we can do better than this. So let's go ahead and do that. The tool that we're going to use is called. Uh, Metro Studio 5 by Sync Fusion, and I've got it uh, running here already. Let's go back actually to the kind of the home page for it. <clears throat> uh, so if you just Google Sync Fusion or Metro Studio 5, you'll find it and uh, can load it onto your system. As I said, it's free. Uh, we at Dyn, uh, Dyn 365 Pros don't endorse it necessarily or anything, but it's one of the tools that we do use, and it does seem to work very well. And you can use it for other things besides just creating icons, custom icons for uh, D365 usage. So you can see over here, they already have uh, a number of icons that are set up and categorized by uh, category. So you can find, gosh, almost anything. And probably your biggest problem is going to be just selecting something from the whole mass of, uh, of possibilities that you have. So one way you can do that obviously is, is going down and looking category by category. Uh, another way is to go ahead and just enter some criteria into the search box here. And since we're dealing with expenses, I'm going to go ahead and look at something that maybe has a uh, dollar as a tag so that I can get something that, you know, is relevant to expenses. And of course, I've looked at these. There's just a ton of them. And I could use something like this or something like this. Let's go ahead and use this uh, icon. And so in order to use that, all I need to do is to come and drag the icon down into this area that says create a new project. And it gives me an untitled as the name. And I'm just going to call this uh, new icon demo. I hit enter and now I have a new project by that name and the project is just a collection of one or more icons uh, and I'm going to go ahead and edit the one that I have selected here <clears throat> excuse me so as you can see uh, there's a nice area that shows you the icon that you've uh, selected uh, up here is an area where I can basically go ahead and modify that or customize it uh, however I want it to. You note here this first slider is basically used to select the size of the icon in uh, pixels. And uh, and it tells you up here, and it, it's a nice scale that says, oh, hey, we can do 32 bits or, or I'm sorry, 32 pixel or 16 pixel. So right now I'm gonna leave it large because it's easier just to kind of manipulate the colors and the images while they're large. And then we can go ahead and, and shrink it back down before we save it. But um, 
So you're going to be able to use that control to uh, size your uh, icon appropriately. And then for those of you who haven't used uh, padding or used a tool like this before, it's pretty nice because you can, uh, within the background of the icon, you can go ahead and determine how much uh, border, if you will, padding is to be showing. And of course, the smaller the number, the smaller the border and the larger that the image itself or the icon itself will, uh, will appear. So uh, it's always a good idea to kind of make that icon as large as you can in the context of the background that it's in. So I kind of like this at the, at the moment anyway. If I wanted to rotate it or to go ahead and flip it, easy to do by just using these controls. And then here you've got the ability to change the background uh, shapes or in this in case uh, in this case you can even have a transparent background. Currently it's defaulting to this black rect uh, rectangle uh, but I could make it a circular background uh, with no background color in it or I can make it this circular background with a background color. I'm going to leave it like this because the other icons are, are square or rectangular I should say and so um, let's just leave it like that for the time being but go ahead and play around with these and just see what you get when you uh, change the various configuration settings there. So these bottom two are ones you'll be uh, interested in using quite a bit of course. Uh, the background color uh, if I click on this, I get a color sliding scale, if you will. And because we're dealing with expenses and money, uh, I think I'm going to go for a green. So I've just clicked in this uh, slider bar. And then within this uh, framework of various shades of colors, I can go ahead and click on something and, uh, you know, keep clicking to find the right shade that I want. And I kind of like this because it's kind of a little bit darker and it's a little bit closer to the color of a, a dollar bill or something, although it's certainly not perfect. But as you can see, the color then is registered here and there's the hex uh, value for it. <clears throat> In this case, I could also certainly go ahead and change the uh, icon itself from its white to something else, but I kind of want to leave it, I think, white in this case, but this control works the same way as this one did. If I click in this color area here, I'm going to get the same slider bar and I can manipulate the colors as I wish. And of course, if it doesn't look right and I get tired of it, I can go ahead and just reset and then it'll go back to the out of the box black uh, and white presentation. So at this point, I kind of like this. Now, what I need to do, though, is to remember that I need to bring this down to a 32-bit, uh, I'm sorry, I always say bit, 32-pixel presentation, and I now need to adjust my padding because I want to make sure that that icon really stands out amongst uh, the background. Uh, so I think we'll do a three-pixel uh, border here, so I, I kind of like that. Uh, so at this point, I can go ahead and export this icon and it's going to be uh, going to my desktop. And as you can see, the default uh, type of file is PNG. And that works great because I can add a PNG as a web resource. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're just going to call this um, oops, expense 3. And I'm going to just put 32 in there so that I remember that it's a 32 pixel by 32 pixel image. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and save that to my desktop. Uh, at this point, uh, if you save it here, this saves the actual file into a um, uh, Metro Studio 5 format that can be used for some other things, not necessarily uh, beneficial for our icon. But uh, I can go ahead and e exit out, and it's going to say, yeah, do you want to save your changes to this project? And I'm going to do that. And so. I can always come back to this and add more icons. Um, I didn't do a 16-bit. We're just doing a 32-bit here for the sake of time, but the process would be the same. I could uh, drag you know, another uh, icon into there, and actually you can rename the icons once they're in the project, so you can keep track of which ones are 16 or 32 or, or, or other types of uh, designations. So I think we're done with this guy for the moment. Uh, let's go back. We're going to have to get rid of this. And so what I'm going to do is go into my uh, default customization solution. I can see my expense here, uh, but I really need to go down and actually add that new PNG file as a web resource. So I'm going to go down to my web resources, which are right there. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and just click new. And for those of you who haven't done this before, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a lot of clicks. And so uh, it can be a little tedious if you've got a lot of them to do, but I think the end result is, is you know, well worth it for the end users. Um, so we're just gonna call this expense 332, how's that? And again, it'll help me keep track of these as I'm looking through uh, the web resources to select which ones uh, I want to apply. The type is going to be PNG, naturally, and language we don't care about. English is the only one we're using in this uh, instance. And then I just need to upload the file, and it's this one right here, the expense 332. So I just click on that. Uh, I can enable it for mobile if I'd want to, and then I'm going to save it. I'm going to preview it just to make sure that I've got the right file, etc. And, and yes, that looks like the one that uh, we just created. So I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to go ahead and publish it. Um, because if I don't do it here, I'll probably forget about it. And then <laughs> when I go ahead and uh, cre uh, add the... Uh, new icon it's not gonna want to do it because it hasn't been published yet so all right so we're good so now we're done with the the web resource and we can go back to the actual expense entity whoops and if i click on that to get the information uh screen i can see here that i've got the ability to update the icons so if i click on that i'll get a new window and as you can see here, the default uh, icons are in, a, in uh, effect at the moment. So let's go ahead and select a new one. And if I do uh, some smart searching, if you will, the XP32, let's see what we get. All right, so here, as you can see, I've been kind of playing with this, but here's the last uh, icon that we uh, uploaded as a web resource. So we're going to select that one and hit OK. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and save just to make sure everything's copacetic, and then I'm going to publish that entity as soon as it comes back here. And it's being a little bit slow, so sorry for the uh, delay. Let's try publish again. And uh, we'll see what happens, so we'll cross our fingers. So uh, again, this is a, you know, something that's kind of a, uh, a nice thing to have, and it does take a few clicks to get everything going, but um, it's just nice when people can see uh, icons and things that are nice and bright and uh, appealing to them and it just helps with the overall presentation of the interface and we all want user adoption to happen um, you know that's the the name of the game with uh, CRM so anyway let's see here that's it it's been fooling me so it really is done so let's go back here and we're going to now uh, f5 our re, re uh, invoke our web page and have it come back and we're going to hopefully see a new icon so pretty simple as long as you follow the steps and pretty cool so uh, again i hope you've uh, picked up a few things from this please do take a look at the uh, free tool on the web there the uh, sync fusion metro studio 5 uh, or there's other products out there as well but uh, as i said that's the one that we've tend to use and it's been working pretty good for us and uh, you know hope you guys have good experience with this give it a try and uh, exercise some of your creative side all right thanks again this has been John Clifton from Dyn 365 Pros thank you bye-bye